With the introduction of the Marketing Freedom for Grain Farmers Act in 2012, Canadian farmers were able to market their wheat and barley directly to U.S. customers. For any farmer wishing to do this, they should have an understanding of the differences between the Canadian and U.S. wheat grading systems. Matt Stanford, who farms near McGrath, Alberta, has been selling into the U.S. since 2012 and offered to go over some of the differences. When you're selling grain into the States, and it would typically be wheat is what I've sold down there, um, the grading systems are completely different and the wheat class systems are completely different. So if you have a grade 1, 13, 5 spring wheat up here, that's not necessarily what it's going to be down there. And I guess the best way to describe that would be up here, everything's more or less a visual grade. They look at it and they go through and they say what is in there visually, whereas in the States, you take them a sample. It's the same as up here that way. You, before you do anything, you take a sample into the elevator. So that's, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. Up here, it's all visually graded. And down there, they take it straight to the state laboratory and they do their protein falling numbers, hard vitreous kernels and stuff like that. But it's all done at a third party impartial and it's, it's more done on the actual milling characteristics of the grain as opposed to a visual grade. So what exactly is the falling number test and why is it important? Flour mills want to produce flour that is high quality and is a consistent product. Grain that has started to germinate or sprout has an increase in alpha amylase, which is an enzyme that breaks down starch in the grain kernel. This is good for a seed wanting to grow into a wheat plant but not so good for bakers wanting to produce quality breads, pastas, and other products. The falling number is a laboratory test that can measure the amount of alpha amylase enzyme in wheat. Flour damaged by alpha amylase holds less water when mixed, and the dough absorbs less water during baking. The baker must use more flour to make the same number of loaves of bread, an important cost factor. The enzyme also affects gas retention, dough handling, and bread texture. Too much alpha amylase activity causes wet, sticky dough that is hard to handle in a commercial bakery. The loaf may have large open holes and the crumb texture is gummy. Gummy bread is difficult to slice and builds up on the slicer blades. Loaves are often deformed, hard to package, and unattractive to customers. The problem is exacerbated with the loaf made from severely sprouted wheat. In Canada at the present time, we have a visual grading system when checking for sprout damage. Kernels showing any evidence of sprouting are separated from a representative portion of the grain. Grade is affected by the percentage of sprouted and severely sprouted kernels in the representative portion. A more accurate method of testing for sprouted kernels in a shipment of grain is the Hagberg Falling Number Test. Falling numbers give U.S. and international grain buyers, as well as bakers and millers in Canada, a better idea of what they're purchasing and allows them to compare our grain to grains grown in other countries. To see how a falling number test is done, we stop by a lab at the Lethbridge Research Center. First, a moisture test is done on the grain. Then, a portion of the grain is ground into flour. A 7 gram subsample of flour is weighed out and placed in a falling number tube. Samples are mixed with 25 milliliters of distilled water and the tube is placed in a shaker to mix the solution forming a slurry. A stirrer is placed in each of the falling number tubes. The tubes containing the slurry are then placed in a boiling water bath in the falling number unit. The falling number unit starts counting as the slurry is stirred for 60 seconds. The stirrers are then moved to the top of each tube and allowed to drop by their own weight through the ground wheat and water slurry. 
the total time it takes for the stirrer to drop to the bottom, including the 60 second stirring time, is the falling number result. The number reflects the amount of sprout damage in each sample. The faster the stirrer falls, the lower the number equals more sprouting damage. In these two samples, a reading of 379 seconds indicated little or no sprouting damage. In this sample, the number of only 68 indicates sprouting damage. This chart compares falling number results along with bread baked from those samples. Although the falling number test only shows the amount of sprouting damage in any grain shipment, it's an important measure of grain quality for millers and bakers. And with international and U.S. buyers wanting to see falling numbers, it's bound to be seen more and more in Canada in the future. We've already seen in Alberta this year minimum falling numbers specified in delivery contracts that the farmer is required to meet. In the American system, in the world system, falling number is a really important characteristic. There's a lot of wheat growers in Alberta that deliver some of their wheat down to Montana and falling number is a specification that they get paid on. And uh, if the grain companies are getting paid on that specification from the miller, uh, it makes sense that farmers are also paid on that specification.